So Josh, hey, Josh Gloss, it's been a while since we've reconnected, but yes. it's great to be reconnecting. So Philip DeClaire, Josh Gloss, it's here a, we are. It's, it's been a, a while. pleasure to see you, brother. It's, it's been a long time. It has. <laughs> it's been a. It's been a couple of years now. Yeah. You know. What a couple of years, huh? Yeah. So I thought, like, before we sort of get into everything, maybe you could give us a little background on how you came to LA and how you and I met and things evolved. Okay, yeah, so, man. Well, with that, I mean, it's a long story. I, when I, I, I came to LA, um, well, you know we met, uh, our daughters went to the same school. Yes. Which is pretty yeah. amazing, very fortunate. Mm -hmm. um, 100 year old school, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, God. a lot of history there. Yeah. yeah, oh, I love that. I love that school. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm an immigrant to Los Angeles. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I came here like many people and actually lived in my car mm. um, for about six months. Oh, wow. Yeah, took showers at the gym oh. and uh, just like what a fool right all of us like what fools you yeah. come here and you you dream and you hope but uh it worked out mm -hmm. I, actually the first job i got was for stetson man okay and my my uh i grew up a cowboy up in pendleton oregon so my mom uh she it, that was the only thing that made her proud out of all the jobs I've done is pretending to be a cowboy for a <laughs> col for a cologne, um, and I was the youngest Stetson man they, they've ever had. Mm. They never did that again. Wow! <laughs> Didn't wow. sell any. No, I don't know if they sold any. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, that that, that really gave me a, a leg up. I originally came here to do music. Mm. I, I had a, I promised my brothers, we had, we literally bent these chains on our wrist. Wow. We called them life chains. Uh -huh. And I, we just promised each other, all right, we're going to do music at all costs. And I didn't even have uh, an ambition to act or to model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just, people were like, hey, you got a good look. And I'm like, okay. I, I'm gonna go make some free money and get my brothers down. Mm, mm. So that's why I came. And so I had no direction when I came here. I didn't know what to do. But you, you had that passion, that desire yeah. to come to LA. Yeah, and, and back then the first modeling job and the last one I did was for Abercrombie and Fitch, which mm -hmm. gave me a good leg up and uh, Ex that was my first traveling thing. I got to go to Islip, Montauk, oh, Long wow. Island. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. coming from a little town in Oregon, it was it was awesome to see, start seeing the world, even though it was just still in America, you know. Um, that must have been a trip. Yeah. From that to that. Yeah, God. You know, it was. Uh, I'd never seen that wealth before, you know. Mm. I think one of the houses we shot in was Keith Richards' house. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can imagine mm -hmm. uh, how... I think he's got a bunch of houses out there. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah, he stores his art in one or two of them, I think. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. they had sculptures, like... Yeah. I haven't seen the houses like that since then. Right. Even yeah. going around yeah. the world, like... So, um... But when I was a kid, I, so I necessarily wasn't... My mom and dad were, they did, they met doing Les Miserables in college. Mm, okay. They were both theater majors, but they never talked to me and my brothers about that or encouraged it. It was like, be a cowboy, and that, that's about it. You think there was like an underlying fear there of performance or in your parents or that, you know? Yeah. There was something going on there to that because it's a cra I mean, they had they had a band where they led worship at church. Oh wow! They were like figureheads in our city, and they also had a country band mm. where they would play at the the prison. 
for the people. Mm, mm. And they did, played at the county fairs. So they had like their, they were living out their dream as much as they could, but I think because it didn't bring capital, right? It, yeah. uh, they were like, we don't want you to be poor artists. Okay. So, okay. which is, it, it's, it's sad that they did that, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yet it must have left some type of a desire or drive in you. Yeah, that's how I, okay. God, that's, I, um, my dad, when I was in junior high, came and put a, a bass guitar on my bed and said, if you learn this, I'll give it to you. Oh, wow. So <laughs> I sat there and I snuck and I listened to like Red Hot Chili Peppers and uh -huh, stuff on my little uh -huh, uh -huh. speaker. And I just copied every bass line I could hear. And, and, and then my brother, older brother had a guitar. My little brother was snare drum mm -hmm. in school. And I'm like, guys, we got to do a band. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I brought him down here. I, I, as you know, for art, it yeah. takes a lot of dedication. Yes, it does. And yeah. I, yeah. I made them when they came here. I made them practice eight to ten hours a day, wow. every day. Wow. And I, I destroyed them. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was just, uh, it, it, it ended up. They, they tried to do the band later, but I just. Um, mm. You have to have like such laser focus to do music. Yes. And uh, yeah. all, all the arts you do, you know. But but in I had a, other aspirations in art. You know, I I won art shows when I was a kid. I know. Yes, you, you showed like, me some of your stuff. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I, um, yeah. I was uh, I was really into advanced art, sculpting, bronzing. Mm. Um, my grandpa was an oil painter, so I was huge, mm -hmm. like a lot of people, Bob Ross mm -hmm. fanatic. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't know, but I learned later on that Bob Ross, he, he, it was the, the paints he was using. He ended up getting cancer from, I oh, guess, okay. some type. Yeah, I bought those. I <laughs> <laughs> he used to always use his hands oh my God. With, with the canvases. Yeah. And back in those days, there was so much lead in the painting yeah. that it was going into his bloodstream. So over time, he didn't know. You know it was really interesting. Yeah. Well, now, I mean, look at me. Yeah, you I, I got, got a lot of stuff there. I got some products on my hands <laughs> now. Yeah. So you went from, because um, it, it's always like, there's always one driver in the band. Do you think that you yeah. were like the driving force, the silent driving force? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I... I once I, I went, I got a, I was on a TV show, The O.C., mm -hmm. the first acting audition I had, and I, I was fortunate enough to book it, and, and all of a sudden I'm making 7500 a week, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it was a incredible, it changed my life, so I called them and I said, you know, pack, send me your bills, I'll start paying them, wow. pack up your crap. And get down here mm -hmm. immediately mm -hmm. and um, I kind of diverted their lives because my little brother wanted to go serve in the Marines and I'm like don't don't we're artists don't do that express yourself yeah and and my older brother was a youth pastor he wanted to be a pastor so I really diverted their life with my like crazy uh, drive and pushing them yes but yeah, if yeah. someone says they're going to pay your bills, you're, pro you're like, all right, I'll go follow you. <laughs> where, <laughs> yeah. are you where are you taking me? Yeah, that's a motivator. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, uh, luckily they recovered. My older brother is a dentist and my little brother is a chiropractor. So mm. they, they found their way. Okay. And they went back home again? Yeah. Okay. And built their lives. Yeah. And you stayed on in the jungle. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I was... I was pretty sad for a while, and I was questioning myself, like, okay, you, um, what, why did you ever even come to L.A., you know? Mm. You, I love the liberal, at least back then, it was a liberal mindset of, like, everyone's an individual. Yes. And uh, we yeah. accept each other, we yeah. love each other, Yeah. and you're free to express everything or anything you, about you, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's crazy, as mm -hmm. I loved it, and same for me coming from Ireland was because I remember oh my LA, God, how yeah back in those days was 
it really was very accepting. Yeah. It didn't matter whether you were from another part of America or another part of the world. When you came here, there was a certain camaraderie. Yeah. And it, like you're saying, like a, a, a kind of a positive liberal yeah. viewpoint, <laughs> right? Great. That we're all equal and we're all yeah. free to express, you know? So, well, that's really cool, yeah. So, and then you decided to stay on. Was Ireland pretty conservative? Or? Ireland is strange. It's like, it's a very liberal arts community. So, okay. um, but the values are pretty conservative, yeah. Yeah. Back in those days. So, and also it's so small. So you're sort of forced to, it's only a matter of time before you have to leave. Yeah, you got to. Yeah, and it's like, or else you're not going to grow as an artist. What are you going to do? Yeah. yeah, it's like, so and back in those days, it was either London. So I went to London, did the whole London thing. God. But the, the mentality in London was very uh, restrictive, I felt. Because to me, America was always the place where you're yeah. free to express yourself. Yeah, they're not very emo. They don't show their emotions. Yeah, right? it's not accepted. Like I remember this one thing on on the on the tube when you go down into the underground yeah. and you take the okay. tube every day. And um, this is when I started to have the epiphany that I needed to get get the hell out of there. <laughs> Everybody was so depressed. Everyone yeah, was you could looking just down feel it. Sort of, yeah, exactly. It was like palpable. And God. then I was like, looking at those old eighties and nineties TV shows, I was going gotta get out of here right yeah i feel that on the subway in new york too like uh, right. just like, uh, yeah you don't want to i mean yeah but overall it's so cloudy there and like i can't mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. couldn't stay there mm -hmm. um even if i lived in knightsbridge yes i wouldn't be able to stay there for yeah. very long you yeah. know yeah or even yeah. Covent Garden, it's just like, oh. okay, you go around it a few times and then... You're over. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like There's so many beautiful places to live. I yeah, mean. yeah. And uh, every time I've traveled, you probably feel the same mm -hmm. thing. I'm like, okay, why do you have to go back to L.A.? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's, that's, the, that's the access to big commercial success... Mm -hmm. which will elevate your career and allow you the, the money, afford you the money to do what you really want to do. Yes. But, yeah. but here, you know, I mean, if, you, if you're walking down the street, you're, mm -hmm. you might as well be homeless. Yes. That's how it, <laughs> yeah. people think you're crazy That's right. or you're homeless. Yeah, or there's something, yeah, exactly, yeah. there's something seriously mentally wrong with you. And it, like, I mean, look how dapper your suit is, but like yeah. we're talking in Italy, I remember yeah. seeing guys bicycling on their with their suits their little, on. Or their little Vespa. Yeah. Right, and oh they've got the three-piece suit and their bicycle clips. Yeah. It's like an accepted part of life, you know? A, a suit to a, an American is a huge thing, unless you're a politic. Yeah. If you're a politic, it's it's like you got to buy your suits. But to most American yes. men, yeah. a suit is a huge deal. You're, you pretty much only rent one for weddings. Yes. You know? Yeah. yeah. A funeral. Or you, a funeral. You find a black <laughs> shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like, it's a huge thing to purchase a suit for mm -hmm. an American. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so weird. how did you? Because uh, it's interesting. How did you develop your understanding of fashion? Because it's it's very um, it's very advanced. Fashion, yeah. yeah. Yeah, your understanding of it was that just from segueing into being in front of the camera all the time, or did you feel that that was something that was just natural to you? God, I just there. There's a magazine called Flaunt Magazine, which is still mm. out, mm. and they hired me to to model some things. And they said, you know, they <laughs> they said, bring a, a few pairs of your own jeans if you want. Okay. Okay. This is ridiculous. I'm like 21 or 22, and mm. I hear that, and I go, literally, this is what I thought. I don't design jeans, but I guess I could. Oh, interesting. So yeah, I got yeah. a pair of old Levi's and I ripped the tags out and I cut the, the sides of them. Mm -hmm. Rock stars ended up doing this too, but mm. I, I got this real cool silk scarf and I hand stitched it in there. Yeah. I distressed it. Before, like back then, only a rock star was distressing their jeans, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I did everything. I On the crotch, I put, I named them Jabez jeans. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I did all this work on them. 
and I brought them, and the uh, the fashion editor, she was like, "What are these?" I'm like, "These are my my own jeans." Your She's creation. Like, you literally made your own jeans. I'm like, "Yeah, just for this, because you told me to bring <laughs> yeah. my own jeans." Yeah. She goes, "I meant like jeans that fit you," uh, and I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to capitalize as an artist, even though I was like hired to be a model. Right. The great thing is they ended up letting me wear them, and I got like the center page, two-page center page of the whole magazine. Oh, very cool! In there, me like, yeah, my Jabez jeans. And I, at that point, I was like, okay, I, I, I guess even though I was a country cowboy, I, I, um, something innate in me, probably the artist, is like, okay, I know how to. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. You had that creativity. Yeah. So like an opportunity came up for you to create in that moment. But what's amazing is that you, you kind of went for it. Yeah. I didn't have anything in my head that said that was a dumb idea. Yeah. Or you didn't have a stop on or you didn't, yeah. you know, you took up that space. Yeah. You know? If I asked anyone around me, they probably would have been like, they just mean bring jeans that fit. Right. Right, and I exactly. I, exactly. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't put that together, but, um, but but moving on with fashion. Yeah, it's so. Um, it's so. Uh, it's a hard thing to grasp because you know it, it, it's constantly evolving, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. Um, there's certain structures of fashion, as you know, like okay, uh, like we're saying, you know, bring it, wear a suit to a wedding, right? Yeah. In uh, America, but for the most part, you, if you're too fashionable in America, you look like you own something, and people are like, what? What do you own? What are you doing? Mm. So mm. I didn't learn it here at all, or in New York. Mm. Um, you don't have to wear a suit obviously you can just put on a scarf and have nice shoes and you're you're fashionable as well in america but but traveling and seeing the the different fabrics that the different companies bring mm -hmm, mm -hmm. seeing visiting fashion houses um i one of my clients was pal zaleri mm. which just amazing yeah suits incredible suits yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, and uh, did you get to see a little bit behind the? Yeah, I got to go all over their, oh, wow. uh, th their fashion house, and, mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. just see how they make them. Incredible, and see all their designs, and I mean, I they handmade me a few suits, mm. and watching the guy with his artistry, like the chalk, you know. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Incredible. I'm not good at name dropping or remembering names. I should though, because this guy was amazing. But uh, you know, uh, so I, if fashion is evolving, but you know, the funny thing is when I shot Hugo Boss mm. in New York, this is a, the the silly thing about fashion. Um, to pull back the veil, is when you're modeling the suits, you got to be a certain size and a certain height, and I'm six foot four. Mm. But I, I lied to my agents to get going, and I, I crowd, bent my knees for every audition. <laughs> Did you really well? Yeah, uh, I just would just do just every cheating moment I could. Okay. And it's to this day on Wiki or anything, it says I'm six foot two. Okay. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Okay. Wow. You know, wow. and but so, it it got me in a lot of trouble every job I did, people, mm. the stylist, I would always be like, why your card says this? Mm, mm. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm here. Mm. So, mm. but, so the Hugo Boss, all the suits, they had to cut a crucifix in the back of the suit. Oh, wow. And then pin it up just for the shots. Wow. So, fashion. Was that nerve wracking or, <laughs> uh, you know? Or you just went with it, you just... Well, I just felt, I felt really bad because I'm not mm. fitting into the mm. mold. Mm. Mm. And, you know, it's interesting because when fashion houses make samples, even though they know you're the model for a few years, mm -hmm. they still can't crank out a size that fits you. Particularly, right. Right. we have to, you know, for the final product, the final art photo that is a, is a marketing campaign it yeah. looks great it fits you great but 
fashion is a really hard thing to fit in mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. for all of us regular people, you know. Were you ever um, interesting in the framing of the shots as well? When I'm um, because that's something that you always um, when we've worked together, yeah, we, you're always very conscious of the framing. Oh my god! I'm sure you've had some instances where you were like, "Shit, you're not happy with that," or right? Well, I for every job I did, I um, I refused to look at the camera mm. uh, because I was scared of the um, of seeing something I didn't like, and then mm. being so insecure, I couldn't mm-hmm. I couldn't bring the actual emotion I needed. Okay. So I would just, I always told photographers or videographers like, what is the vibe? Mm. And some of them would be like, well, we're shooting underwear today, dude. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I know, but like, what's the vibe? What, do, what are you feeling? What are yeah. we feeling? You were asking for the mood yeah. of the shot. Every time. And, yeah. and I need that because I believe the, that modeling is acting mm-hmm. and acting is modeling mm-hmm. <laughs> you know that's yeah yeah and um eventually when i had a little more confidence a few photographers or videographers like jonas ackerland uh-huh. a great director i did three campaigns with him he, him i trusted enough that he'd be like josh come look at this and i'd go back and peer Check at the camera and they're like, wow yeah you're amazing yeah. you know like that's you but at, by that point i n- learned what the framing right. what they were capturing by i always asked camera men and grips you know what are you what are you shooting with and just really sensitive to caring what, what are you using to capture this art mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um so at the end of it and that's what i believe you know like you're you're modeling, you need to know the composition of the shot. Right, you, right. You need to know what's interesting. And they say you need to know your angles. A lot of photographers would just be like, what's your, what's your good side? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, I, I have no idea. Mm. I, know, I, I didn't grow up putting any stock in the way I look. Mm. I, uh, I, you know, you could go on about childhood dreams of but i wanted to be an nfl football player mm. i got a mm. scholarship to go to college for that okay and instead i did I did a vocal performance major college at a liberal arts college it's oh. funny you say that about yeah, ireland yeah. yeah and then i dropped out because i'm like i can't i don't want to do opera i'll never make any money yes that's right yeah but it, uh, yeah unless you're at the very top and then yeah. it's like nine something like nine hours a day practice or something it's yeah. an insane amount of I have voice lessons every yeah. day yeah and it's humiliating you're screeching like a, a chicken you. getting strangled that's and it. like that's good yeah go higher I'm like no <laughs> this is humiliating but um but i mean talk about sophistication mm. fashion like mm. you have an mm. eye mm. that pilot we uh, yes did, yes um, yes uh, w- which was cool so we met at our daughter's um, schools, and then we decided to work together yeah. on a pilot, which was really cool the way an organic. The first one, okay. yeah. So elementary, okay. Yeah. We wrote so that elementary. one. And yeah. um, which was a, a comedy about the PTA of, of yes. the elementary school. Yes, because we had like jumped in and out of a few of the yeah. ridiculous PTA meetings at the school. <laughs> right? There's a lot of humor <laughs> there, yeah. And yeah. we were seeing all these different characters. Yeah, you know? it's like a beauty pageant in a way. Yeah, people wait. They're fighting for their kids, you know. <laughs> but they're not fighting for the kids in the PTA. They're fighting for their own pageant. That's it. Yeah, you know? yeah. It was really um, all about them. Yeah. But we thought it was about man or woman. Yeah, it didn't it, really matter. No, it, you know, it was a scary place. Um, but no, when we did uh, the other pilot. Oh yes, the advertising one. Yeah, yeah, up at Paul's house. Adstar. Adstar. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was something. Yeah, you you have a, a great eye for sophistication. Like thank you. you yeah. You um yeah. were definitely the overseer director of like mm-hmm. of everything. You know. Yes, you that was a nerve wracking. You brought day. the location. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was hard, but I mean, productions are always nerve wracking. Yeah, it's always. That's true. It um, is. Yeah, yeah. Unless you got a million people having their own stress mm-hmm. it's gonna be hard especially being the executive of it 
you, you had a lot on your back. You know? Yeah, I had my production table. Yeah. And I lost my phone for about 45 minutes. And the client was on the way, who was Kayla, right? Yeah, yeah. She was on the way. And she had her one dress for the day. And then because I wasn't picking up her, whatever, thousand phone calls, <laughs> she decided to lock herself in the car. God. Well, no, she came, first she came to set. She took a look around. And then she got in her car, locked the door, remember? Yeah. And then she refused to come. Just, she had so much anxiety. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because yeah, you didn't. It, that's the hard part on set. You have to juggle so much. So and many different personalities. Yeah, and everybody's yeah. anxious. Even if you're a grip, Yeah. you don't want a camera thrown at you because you <laughs> That's right. You didn't grab a C-stand in yeah. time. You know? Yeah, yeah. So. And then we were conscious about as well that it was a nice house as well, so we didn't want to damage yeah. anything in the oh house. Oh, God, yeah. Because there, there was some very expensive art <laughs> around the house. So, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of variables, you know. How yeah, it's. it's. I mean, camera um, being in front of the camera, behind the camera. It's a very sterile form of art, mm, right? Mm, video, mm. video ca camera. It's all. Yeah. Super sterile. It's not like a painting where you can just be like high as a kite and crap all over you and like yes. and come out with a painting or a sculpture. Yes. And, you know, after being locked away from everyone in isolation yeah. right yeah it, yeah it's a team total team collaboration total team effort yeah that's yeah. what's funny because look at everyone when they get the awards I, you know i thank god i think this age and they say a bunch of names and and they actually accept an award for an oscar which is just like how mm -hmm. you you know and i know mm -hmm. the editor yeah. was that last person yes yeah under the guidance of a director yes yeah you yeah, know yeah getting heart making you look like you're amazing um so that but you you lose the humility because you end up winning the, the award as an incredible actor and say like if, if they edited it a different way Every great actor, <laughs> movie star, like would look like trash. Yeah, you, yeah, you can yeah. make any actor look yeah. terrible. Yeah, and uh, most people don't understand that. You know, mm -hmm. it. Um, mm -hmm. I think one of the amazing things is that when you're, like, even that day when we were doing that shoot, like you yourself, right? So it's like it's not just as well that you're, you know, the talent. You're also the writer. You're also the co-producer. You're also the co-director. So it's like you're wearing all of these different hats. Yeah. But you're also in front of the camera. So it's like that takes a certain sophistication to be able to do all of that, you know. So I'm always amazed that, like you're just saying, it really is a team effort. Yeah. You know. But you've always acknowledged. You gotta um, be a team. Yeah. I mean, even at the end of the day, there. I think you and I were the last two to leave. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was a tiring day. Yeah, I mean, but every production is. I mean, yeah, the only way you can wear different hats is you have to compartmentalize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You you can't bring some regular individual ego into each hat. That's it. You're you're yeah. gonna tear everyone up and everything. And I God, I've I've learned that a lot. I mean, yeah, you know, I used to be on sets. I would be they would be keep shooting a shot for a couple hours mm -hmm. and i and i since i'm not looking at the camera i'd get so i'd just be sweating with embarrassment like god i must suck you know mm. but when you're on the other side of the camera you mm. realize it's it's uh they might have got the shot and they want you to do keep going until keep you, going. and just keep making better yeah. and better and better yeah. until you get tired yeah until you pass out maybe, yeah you know so we were talking a bit about, um, or I'm just checking my, okay, good, I'm on. Um, we were talking a little bit about that, that pilot that we co-wrote together, co-produced together, co-directed together. That was fun. Yeah, that ad you know? star. Ad star, yeah. 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 God. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the, uh, I don't want to share the concept in case we- Exactly. We close the deal on that project. Closing the deal on it, yeah. Which is very likely that that, mm -hmm. that will happen, so let's mm -hmm. be careful. But it, it was a concept really to bring creatives together and make them work as a team. <laughs> right. Right? Which is, that's a big right. undertaking to yeah. force. Yeah. Not just creatives, but artists. 
Yeah. Um, and what I was thinking about it as well was that um, it was it was really cool because we also brought together in when we were shooting in getting our sizzle together for it. We also brought together people from all different walks of life, but yet there, there was that teamwork. Yeah. To yeah, work together. It's pretty fun. It's like that's one of the. It seems to me like that's one of the themes, but that's been running through your life and my life. The yeah. importance of creatives coming together. Well, you're you, know? you have a good empathy for the other creatives. I think yes. you've, you yeah. have a strong intuition. I remember when I needed help on an acting audition. Mm, that was fun. <laughs> you drove yeah. across town yeah. to come over and like school me and like, all right, this is how you break yes. this script down. I'm like, That's all right, right, good. In fact, I think you, you had a trailer at the back of your house or something. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, just to, just to, got an old beat up trailer just to, just to have a, a place. Uh, if you got a nice house, yeah, um, it's stale in a weird way. It's not necessarily creative, you know. Exactly. It's weird. Yeah, and I think a like funky old trailer. Yeah, but the trailer was good. great yeah. because I don't you know if you feel. So much. Yeah, I don't know if you feel this way. Like whether you're doing an acting gig or or modeling gig or when I used to act, it's like when you step into the trailer, it's almost as if it's like you're. Yeah. Office. Yeah. Right? It's like you're coming to work. Put on the work. tool belt and the That's construction it. hat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you just get to just focus and, uh, yeah. God, we had to dip out a few times. Mm -hmm. Got to check on the kids. Mm -hmm. But, um, how did that audition go? Um, that, that was fun. We worked a lot of different, yeah. Yeah. I was doing it. I'm sure I booked it. <laughs> yep. Hey, you know, yeah. I, 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 the, Speaking of auditions, like it's really important for me, if anyone listens to this, to really hear my viewpoint on auditions because a lot of people want to be actors, musicians, models. They want to be the videographer, the photographer, the editor. Mm -hmm. And you build up so much insecurity because you don't book the jobs you want. And it's like normal people, they go on an interview for a corporate job and they go on four or five and they, they get the job. Yes. But creative yeah. people, when they need to go cash in their creative talent, their artist talent to make some money, you, you're going to hear more like 50 to 100 to 1,000 no's. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. And those beat you down. Mm -hmm. So much, all your advisors, your if your talent, your manager, mm -hmm. your agent, your mm -hmm. publicist, like, mm -hmm. well, your mm -hmm. hair was too short. Well, mm -hmm. you need to lose a little weight. Right. Well, you're too young. You're too old. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Were you having a bad day that day? Yeah. Did you show yeah. up late? Yeah. How did you yeah. read the lines? Too much salt the night before. Right. Too much sugar the day before. Right. And it, it's important to if you could really advise talent mm. or anyone creative. Mm. The, the the single reason why they didn't book the job is because somebody else did. Right. That's all. Right. It, yeah. All that other shit is just shit. It's it's literally because someone else booked it. Now you're gonna work on your skill. Yeah. The, your image. Mm. And it needs to come from inside of you, not mm. because people around you are going. Well, you because then it's insecure. It's mm. fake. It's mm. you're mm. trying to be mm. a caricature of yourself as other people define you. Yes, you, that's yeah. not artistry. You know. Yes. You you sit there before you draw a, f a picture. All of us, when we're children, and we say, well, "What do I want to draw?" Right. Yeah. It starts there from inside, and so you end up destroying yourself by listening to all these influences of like when you walk a certain way and do it all perfect you'll book a job mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. it's just simple and everyone just needs to remind each other you didn't book it because somebody else did yes that's it yes it's, there's yeah. nothing you did wrong did you um or <laughs> it's or, important or, I, yeah you know it's really important to I know hate seeing everyone yeah. get so insecure yeah and the so insecurity, yeah. yeah, yeah, or just totally be a f not an actor, a factor, a fake actor, yeah, because, yeah. because they're like, uh, I gotta do it exactly the way everyone's telling me, and yeah, we, we just destroy each other as artists by, yeah. by yeah. not even know we're yeah. doing it. 
Do you, yeah, do you, um, okay, so it's a profound question, but when I was acting professionally, do you know when you've booked a job? Like, have you walked out of there and you've just gone? Or are you always surprised or <laughs> bewildered when you don't? Or yeah. like, or is it a mix of all of all of three, you know? That's a good question Yeah, for you. Uh, well, I, I know when I have literally birthed my own emotion out and mm, I'm mm. really exuded me. You know, like as an actor, you know, mm -hmm. first you get the script, you break it down, you make choices or whatever your, your policy is yeah. to internalize it. And then you, you get good at saying the lines. Now, some people like the tone, especially people who went to theater school or acting school, like yeah. this is a tone, this is how it should come across. Yes, yeah. But yeah. at the, the very last part of it is like, now do mm. I literally get to connect mm. Mm. and receive? That's the very last part. And when, when I've done that, I don't give a damn if people don't like that or not. Yeah. Because you know that feeling. Yeah, I do, yeah. That feeling yeah. when I'm like, I've really exuded me. Yes, yeah. And, yeah. and then if you get it back. Yeah, yeah. And when you came over to help me with those sides, that's why I don't remember uh, I booked or not. I probably did. I was mm -hmm. booking everything. Mm -hmm. But it, it's just uh, when we... We ran the lines a couple of times, and yeah. you helped me realize it. it's this connection. Mm -hmm. When you have that connection, it just it. Someone else booked it. Who cares if yes. you didn't book it? Yes, yeah. Because yeah. you you know now your agent. You get on the phone. Oh, you didn't get that because uh, I guess you were read it too smiley or too happy. Fuck off. Right. Exactly. Like yeah. Not, <laughs> yeah. They don't understand the creative you, process. You, so. Yeah. You don't hold the mm. the paintbrush. Mm. I do. And if you want to make me so insecure that I'm shaking when I paint, yeah, go right ahead. You're going to ruin it. And, uh, and mm -hmm. a lot of the people who we trust as artists to help us, they get us shaking and no, I'll paint this way. And yeah. you really got to just step back and let a person get to that point where they're really just exuding themselves. As an actor, you ask, yeah. it takes a long time to get to that yeah point. yeah yeah it does it a great does. cold reader is like well i know how lines will sound and i know exactly <laughs> how to take a break <laughs> yeah. and deliver it you know and dramatic like, pause yeah, yeah and and yeah. you can fool everyone like, mm. what a great cold mm. reader mm. but mm. you're not feeling anything so what's the point yeah why why yeah. did you wake up today yeah and that ties into that whole idea of it just drives me bananas when they talk about people judging yeah you know, the actor comes in and, you know, like when you go to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts or, you know, the you know, London Academy of Dramatic Arts, it's, it's an amazing process because nobody's judging anyone. So wow. they just ask for opinions. Wow. And then, so when you take notes and you take, but if you go to a lot of the schools in America, they're like sitting there and, and they're fucking judging people. Like, what's with that? Yeah. Like I, you know? I want to see the, the footage is out there, and they they've never, someone's hiding it. Mm. But the footage of Brando, mm. his classes, mm. when uh, Marlon Brando had that class, he showed up one time dressed as a woman. That's right. Yeah, yeah the actor's studio. Yeah, know, yeah, and, yeah. And Michael Jackson came into his yeah. classes. Like, yeah. I want to see that because, you know, he Brando, as you know, was is the art of lying. Yeah, but. Uh, he really believed the mm, lie he did mm, in it. Mm. I mean, I want to see that class. Yeah, there's like a story about him on Apocalypse Now, which is fascinating. So, I don't know if oh, you know wow. this story where... So, uh, Francis Coppola came to him the first day of shooting, and he goes, um, here's the script, <laughs> you know all your lines, and then Brando just locks the door in his trailer. Oh, wow. And he's in there for one day, two days, three days, so by the 10th day, Coppola's going bananas. He's like, every day is costing me when he opens the door. <laughs> and he goes, so you know your lines? You're, locks the door again. And then Coppola finally has the epiphany that he's not going to go by script. Mm, and yeah. he opened the door and he goes, okay, do what you want to do. 
okay, that's going to work. And then he left. And then he comes out. He had the freedom. So yeah, he had that. He God. was able to just create. To exude you know, himself. God. You know, and yet he knew the script so well that he was able to bring all those different colors to it. Yeah. You know, so it's probably something in that, um, I w that sense of self, that sense of confidence that not everybody's going to have, so you're right, it would be amazing to see those. It gets ripped away, like, yeah. in, in, yeah. uh, it gets ripped away in the classes, and, yeah. and by all the, the great meaning people, your manager, your agent, they, they want you to succeed, because they want yeah. the money off of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They, yeah. they don't necessarily want you to succeed for any other reason in the world, but they, mm -hmm. that's a strong motivator, money. Mm -hmm. But they, and that's why they end up giving you so much shitty advice. Yeah, yeah, you, and you haven't, do. yeah, you haven't listened to the advice. Yeah, I, I haven't mean, listened. Uh, yeah, no, and, you know. and that's why when I, I'm in a lull or I'm not acting or I'm not doing that, it, it really doesn't damage any part of me. You know, it, it hurts the pocketbook. Mm -hmm. They say, you know, actors, like, it's hard because you go these long periods where people aren't saying yes to you. and uh, Feast or famine type stuff. Yeah, yeah and yeah, it's yeah. like, well, I really don't give a damn. Like, because mm -hmm. I, I'll, you know, if I'm 80 years old and I decide, okay, I want to try this, then I'll get my own camera, we'll write something, we'll yeah. produce something, we'll yeah. make something so I can get off on that feeling of being an artist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. but, I, but I'm not going to let, uh, you know, I was a child before, I, I, I'm done with that insecurity of ego. Um, and I literally get, the one thing I learned by going to Playhouse West uh, mm -hmm. and other acting, classes in LA I went to all of them but mm. the, it it I felt so bad for every actor because you you they go up there and they're scared they spill the beans and then they're critiqued and yeah. it, it was the always the one who got the the round of applause in an acting class is the one who's like no 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 like real loud and I'm, yeah, yeah. Real yeah. fucking angry, loud, yeah. Yeah. obnoxious, yeah. like yeah. a theater person. Yeah, yeah. and we're, we're we're trying to book TV shows and movies, <laughs> and the, the person who projects so loud that everyone's scared to death. Yeah, the yeah. teacher was like, "That's right. Yeah. What they did That's was good. right." Yeah. yeah, and I would be like, "No, God damn! I saw so many great moments mm. of every one of these people, mm. 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 and yeah." Are you, are you, yeah, that's a predominant, like yeah, you, you predominant just tore the, every actor down? Yeah, Meisner School, yeah, it's very analytical, you know? Yeah, which, you know? which, I, yeah, I think it, I saw that and I'm like, no, that is not, you can't, you don't get to control, now if you're creative and you commission an artist, then what you commissioned is your art. Right. Exactly. Right. exactly. So that's different. That's like, different, exactly. The studio yeah. gets to say MGM. Yeah. And they get to know I'm the artist. Mm, mm, I, you know, mm. and the beauty's in the breakdown, though. Like, mm, you know, mm. I acted in that. The, the, I edited that. Mm -hmm, I colored mm -hmm, it, you know. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. but the, the creative gets to say they're the artist. So there's different levels of it. Yeah. But one thing like the going to all those classes in LA does is. Um, apart from wasting a phenomenal amount of money, <laughs> yeah. the other thing is that it does allow you to, well of course it all depends on your strength of sense of self, it does give you a ballsy attitude to, to, to dealing with, to a certain extent, yeah. criticism. Because yeah. I would go up in front of tons of those. I mean, I went to Edgemar, I went to Meisner, I went to the act. They had an actor's studio out here under Pacino's um, acting coach, and he had this thing whereby he wanted all the windows. It was so obnoxious. All the windows had to be black. Yeah. And we were all in there getting into character. Just I need to see misery, and yeah. it was the same thing. Whoever was the loudest and the most vocal. Yeah. My yeah. It's like, no, actually, because there was no color in it. You, the name dropping. You yeah, the whole I bought a Chubbuck. Mm. If you took off your shirt and you That's actually right. put your tongue down the mm. other actor's throat mm. and you really mm -hmm. got Come a heart on. Yeah. Now, everyone like that. Yeah. That's an actor. Yeah. That's an actress. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. What a way to screw with an artist. Yeah, he's phenomenal. He <laughs> what went a way to for screw. it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and yeah, luckily I was able to be like that. Ah, this isn't right. You yeah. Know, to yeah. to taste it and like that's not right. And yeah. That's why I never really put all my eggs in that basket of acting. It's just like you know, you're not going to destroy me. Yes. For me to get my way. I mean. Yes. And yeah. I, and yeah. as an artist, yeah. you want to get your way. You want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many great directors throw away their their I remember the entourage mm -hmm. TV show remember mm -hmm. that yes there yeah. was one uh, episode maybe the whole season where the director was just kept they they're like show us the movie show us the movie and he kept going no fuck no I'm not showing you and he stayed in the dark and he just kept re-editing and re-editing it <laughs> and uh, and I love that it's because familiar. that's, that's yeah, an that's, artist that's an artist you yeah. know but but you know going to the the pilot that we were doing yes without yeah. being specific yeah we wanted to have a group of creatives right work together yes for a final product for a common goal yeah yeah and compete with another group right right so that's a that's a, that's a huge yeah challenge you know yes yeah and i think one of the unique things about that was that we had um without of course give <laughs> <laughs> giving the concept away, we had a, a backdrop that would allow us the expansiveness yeah. of such a big idea, you know? Yeah. I think like we've always had pretty big ideas. Yeah. You know, maybe you want to speak a little bit about that because one of my things back home was, was that when I came out here, it, not, it wasn't that it, I was consciously, you know, go big or go home, but it, my thing was, was that it allows you as a creative to have a large space. Yeah. And I remember when we were acting in, in theater um, under, you know, Meisner, and, but also specifically under Stanislavski, you would work a lot with space and constriction. So you're tall, I'm tall, and I felt like when I came out to the west coast of America, I had that expansiveness. Right, it's so wide open out here. Yeah, it really is. Oh. Yeah. The, yeah. The largeness of the the canvas yeah you know God, totally. i mean i never felt small i did uh, you know did that ever happen with you that you felt like you know the canvas was just too big or too much or you know? uh as you create or as you compete yeah <laughs> which one point. both of them i think probably for me was i never felt that the canvas was too big for me to compete yeah because i never went in really with good. with the concept to win yeah i went right. in with the concept just to express myself well that's the the, the don't stare and compare yeah and exactly if you don't have that you're not gonna yeah. make it in any yeah in any your yeah. art will never see the light of day jesus yeah thanks be to god and ever yeah you know. but maybe that's just the way i was raised where you know your irish blood yeah, it's just a fighter. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, but you have that as well. You know, yeah, the, I have a cowboy blood fighter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you gotta have some fight to get to uh, to win it. Anything really in life, but yeah. Uh, but it's it's funny we we're talking about not an artist selling out in a way, and then yes. being told this is the art, and and like. I said earlier, like if there's a creative above you, they're the artist now, and they commissioned you. Yes. So you really yes. have a responsibility to bring all your skills to fulfill the painting they want. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But let's say you have success at it, and you become a celebrity. So your brand and your what you do is admired, right? Yes. Now you have a new client. Right. It's not the creative, it's the, the buyer, the mm -hmm. fans, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's another prison for an artist yeah. because now you have to create for them and you want to go through some shit in your brain or you go through a divorce or anything happens mm -hmm. or you just all suddenly you have wealth and you never had it. Mm -hmm. You, you want to now create, it, it brings out because artist is like the creative skill in every human being. Yes. Right? Yeah. Coming yeah, out. Yeah. And so now 
you're going to take people like this is the new me mm -hmm. and here's the what I want to exude will you buy it well no you you have a new boss the mm -hmm. fans the people that liked what you created Jesus you're fucked <laughs> <laughs> you're fucked because if you don't keep delivering right. that yeah they're yeah. like you're off you're off page yeah what yeah. are you doing yeah 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 and so it's terrible for an artist to have any success yeah because and to have fans mm -hmm. it's really terrible because now that's you, what yeah you stay in that you got to stay you got to keep dancing for them you try to yeah it's know. a nightmare well for me that would be a nightmare because yeah. if i'm i can only speak of myself so of my own experience because you can't really ever speak for another person's experience no you can relate to them right <laughs> but if i'm a let's say a movie star or a celebrity and every everybody recognizes me for a certain character in a tv show or a movie and i go to the grocery store one day and i'm having a bad day yeah and there's a lady in line and i flip out you know tmz gets it online yeah the studio sees me losing my mind the fans go god he's he's really not that nice of a guy right he's he's got this other side to him well maybe i don't want to watch his show anymore or no go right. spend 15 dollars on right my right because right. he's not really that nice of a guy <laughs> <laughs> so it seems to me as if that that could be a real trap yeah like you just said that that word a prison yeah i mean how do you get out of that yeah emotionally it, it, it's huge right mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. yeah, it's huge because so emotionally very good exactly i mean you can't your yeah your ego can't be wrapped into your brand or your art your it's and unfortunately the more success you have the le i mean can kubrick step away from what he was doing Coppola step away from what he was doing Scorsese step away and do mm -hmm. anything uh, mm -hmm. can any of the great artists in, in cinema step away and do something different no can Al Pacino no right. I no, mean he's yeah. played a woman and he's, he's he's played every character but it's all still him because they're gonna edit it that way yeah good point <laughs> you know yeah that's yeah. what the editors like well I've yeah. seen him in this and so actors are always like, I took this role on mm. so I could do more and show more. Well, you don't really have much chance of doing that. Yes. You, you, yeah. It's going to be edited yeah. because that's what people see. That's when you're speaking correctly. That's when you're doing what you do right. Right. And um, right. I, Lady Gaga's documentary, Five Foot Two. Yes. I think yeah. that's the name, right? Yes, I think, okay. I believe it was, yeah, about her journey. Yeah, I mean, I feel, I feel rude calling her Lady Gaga, mm. not knowing her real name, Stephanie something. Mm. Mm. And that documentary made me feel that way. Mm. Like, how rude of me. Mm. Mm. But her fans are like, we don't give a rat's ass about Stephanie. We, we do in context to Lady Gaga. Right. That's your name. Right. I hope your family's great. But you're still Lady Gaga, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she makes a documentary yeah. being like, yeah. no, I'm literally not. Yes. Yes. I'm Stephanie yes. whatever yes. it is. Yes. And she's an artist. She's like, uh, she's a human. Every human has creative skill. Mm -hmm. But she's someone who's capitalized off of her art skill. Mm -hmm. one of them singing mm -hmm. acting a acting, great actress yeah. yeah but she's she's now she has to deliver that documentary proved it to her i mean i think when she saw it as they edited i, I hope she realized i mean but she's been pretty quiet since the, that she has yeah it, it yeah it hurts the brain you're like wait that's how everyone sees me yes and i think uh, I no right there was a, a one that i saw recently it sort of segues into that same idea it was a selena gomez one oh yeah, yeah. and she was talking about her internal journey and and her battle with mental health and depression and anxiety and uh, i believe bipolarity as well it was really interesting the same thing so when oh. she went back and she was visiting all her, her her haunts as a child growing up in her school 
they were all like, okay, well, when are you going to sing us a song? <laughs> no, but I'm going through this turmoil, this, this journey, and I'd like to share this with you. Okay, we understand that, but when's the next album coming out yeah. type of a thing? So it's like, she's trying to be authentic. Even her family probably did it. Too. Yeah, even your yeah. closest people. The closest people. So it's like, like I remember you dance for yeah. everyone. Dance for me. Right. Uh, like, we know you're going through a lot. But but um, yeah. is there a is there a new song coming yeah. out of this? Or <laughs> so that kind of goes back a little bit to what you were saying about the human experience, right? That there has to be a, um, a an avenue to express yourself creatively. Yeah. So I, I can imagine that some of these, you know, celebrity status type things or projected celebrities, they become their own type of prison. Yeah. You know, their own type of constriction. How do you find a way out of that? Yeah, that's a good, good point. So we were talking about, um, which is a really valid thing that artists get into creativity because they want to be authentic, they want to be heard, they want to express themselves. Yeah. But oh shit, then they come up against, like you were saying, the idea of who they are yeah. and the context of how that's been defined and how that can become a prison. So is there a way out of that for an artist? Well, for the artist, mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting because you made me, th I don't know why, but I, I thought of Michelangelo and yes. the 16th chapels that you're saying that. And the fact that, like back then he was doing like a, a comic book mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's the Sistine mm -hmm. chapels. It's just mm -hmm. like a modern day comic book. Mm -hmm. It is a visual representation. But now we look at it and like, no, he's an extraordinary painter. and we don't even realize how simple that was to him and like the pigeonhole he was in yeah right yeah our galleries yeah. were like a comic book strip back then like i mean that's how it started but uh i don't know why that just came to mind because history will be kind to you and it'll it'll, it'll allow for a greater interpretation of the art you made but in the moment you're yeah you're you are constricted to um, the buyer, right? To the audience. But, uh, and if you, if you try to like change your image, mm -hmm. basically, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have any hope? No, most of the time you don't. Yeah. And then yeah. in trying, you lose all your confidence. Yes. Because you're yeah. like, I, I hit a home run before. Yes. I can hit another one. Right. And right. when an artist tries to hit another home run and doesn't stick to just keep hitting the exact same home run, they're done for. Yeah. And then you have a lot of um, actors and actresses who, for example, take up the hobby of painting or doing photography. Yeah. And they try to... <laughs> like Jim Carrey. Right. They try to place themselves in a different context and then to a certain extent the public or um, the people in general don't allow them that expansiveness. So it's like here we come up against the, yeah. the plight again of the artist. Yeah. Right? Is there a need for something new then to come, to yeah. emerge out of that need to express, do you think? <sighs> Well, for a human being, mm -hmm. there is. Mm -hmm. um, but art is really just a human being's creative skill, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's not really an expression that you are some, you're not really some, because <laughs> I take, I hear some someone singing someone back there. singing out there, yeah. Very awesome. That's Pretty nice. Good singing, good voice. Yeah. But um, there, a human being isn't necessarily a super human being where everything that they do now should be a success 
or they were never a success. Yes, really good know? point that. Right, it's exactly. Like your, your art or that moment, mm -hmm. uh, that was the success. And mm -hmm. you just be grateful. And then if you try to transition or do other shit, you know, just be okay with uh, having zero success. Because <laughs> that's what you're going to have most of the time. Right. You know, right. like, right. even like, one of the old presidents, George W. Bush, he, uh -huh. he, now he paints uh, veterans. Mm. And he found a lot of success in selling the books and art because he has enough people to buy it. Right. right. But he's not a, most people don't know that if they're not a fan of his. And, uh, and Lady Gaga did that amazing movie with um, Bradley Cooper. Mm -hmm. But she, where are all, and then she had the house of, uh, House of Gaga or whatever, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but she also has a non-profit, which is um, yeah. a lot of it's based in Vegas. Okay. Wow. Um, and again, they're they're trying to destigmatize mental health issues. But like you're saying, oh, good. It's so the artist is an artist in whatever vein they have to express themselves. I mean, maybe it comes back then down to that whole idea of commerciality. And how they can press down upon the artists, yeah, and constrict them, and get a stranglehold into the creative process, you know. Yeah, what is the heart of an artist? Mm. Like, because even if you're, like, you had success and it bought you a house, mm -hmm. it took care of you. Mm -hmm. A lot mm -hmm. of people don't have that, you know. Uh, if you yeah, I, I researched the different definitions of art, and there are so many. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's unbelievable. An art, art artist. Let's take for example, person working in corporate America. Mm -hmm. They're an artist in the fact that, okay, I have eight hours a day. I got to be here, mm -hmm. so I have to do uh, form over function art. Yes. I have to prove to my boss that I'm a tool. I'm w worth it to him. Right. So or her. So I'm gonna pretend like I'm clicking on my computer when they walk by every time. <laughs> I'm gonna do reports and say, look what I, I worked hard over the weekend. You know, mm -hmm. for the most part. But they and so there's an artist skill in every human being. Mm. Sometimes it's just like a, like. Brando, it's the, the, the art of lying. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone's mm -hmm. doing that at every job they have, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And they say, you know, if you're paid a salary, you don't even show up to work, right? You've heard that? Yes, yeah. Don't pay people salaries because they don't even show up to work. Right? Yes, yeah. They don't have to. Mm -hmm. But if you pay them by the hour commissioned, then you, you have to create more art. You don't just artistically use your creative skills to make it look like you're working hard. Right, right. But everyone right. does that. Yeah. So. And I, I, I think that that's a really good point as well, that whatever is pushing down upon you, so whatever is restricting you as an artist, you have to find a way out of that. Yeah. Those are the conditions, right? Let's say you're fixed givens in acting. Yeah. Okay, you got a fixed given of you are pigeonholed into being a certain type. Right. So that's your fix given. It doesn't matter what casting director you walk into, what director, what producer. You've got to find a way as an artist out of that right. if you're going to play a different role. And I feel like you and I are at a point in our lives where whatever roles we're playing, me as the art manager, art dealer, art consultant, you as the um, fashion model, writer, producer, musician, Maybe there's a way in which we can come together to offer some type of a platform to people that can authentically express themselves. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's a great, a great point. I mean, when, you know, when people share their emotion like we're at the end of the day here where the money they make the success that they have but there is a trade be before the money you mm. know when you're creating it right and we know that yes yeah trying so many different forms of art as you've done yeah and and i've partaked in too 
you, oh, any youth bartender, you, yeah, yeah. Well, but you, you, you feel good in the moments where people, um, like the, I've heard that like art mm -hmm. is not art in itself. It's a middle ground between the artist and the person receiving it. Oh yes, and, yeah. And so that's just there, mm -hmm. it, but it's the Vincenzo Basilica, yeah. But if there's an exchange at all, mm -hmm. I've received what you've created. And that's the heart of an artist in the first place, of our human being. Like, you know, I mean, like, the, like I was saying, corporate. Yes. You're trying to yes. create art to your boss. Like, I'm still working. Yes. You know? I really am still working. Yeah. <laughs> You're bullshit. <laughs> Most <laughs> people are bullshit in their job. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Or they're not getting paid near enough. Yeah. If they yeah. aren't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you, you know, I think it's important for any artist because of the initial thing is you want it to be received. If I create this, mm -hmm. which I didn't create this, obviously, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I need it to be received. I don't just need money. Yes. Right? And that's kind of why, if we talk about a celebrity like Lady Gaga, why uh -huh. she wants people to to receive her as Stephanie, you know? I'm the artist. Well, no, they received your art. Keep creating this, and this exchange is what you should be fulfilled by as yes, an artist. Yes, that's excellent. You know? Yeah, yeah. So if you now don't have success, mm. and you create other art, mm. at least create it and look back at it and accept it yourself. Yeah. And that's how mentally you can handle not being a success mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but and that's how you started in the first place yeah when no one got you yeah when yeah. no one saw what you're what you were saying when you said well what should i draw mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. first you wanted to create something from your skills that actually amused you so go you got to go back to that yes right yes the purity of that yeah yeah and um, it was like Victor Franklin said that between stimulus and response. Huh. So you've got the stimulus. You got a moment there. That's yeah. right. And that moment is your fucking moment. Yeah. So I guess that goes back to amazing. If that moment is, um, I don't want to say the word poisoned, but let's say if it's marred by a perception or tainted that's yeah. a great one tainted now we're writing a script here yeah so it's like but if it's <laughs> if it's tainted exactly um then to a certain extent it, it becomes a manipulation yeah right it's like if that's so if to your question of can can we use our you know eclectic yes skills and our eclectic um, journeys yes to help other artists mm. i think that was the heart behind um the sizzle that we've created the pilot for the for the other project we've created. yes that hardest yeah to help artists and i think um be beyond the the marketing and the commercialism you're right mm -hmm. not beyond but before um there we can find the artists yeah and we can help them express who they are what they're what they are putting out there yes, we can find yeah. a, a lady gaga before she's lady gaga and we can let her have a voice yes and that's really important because mm -hmm. people just see the exchange and they go oh my god that's an idol You're yes an idol yes yeah and and yeah. that's not you, you lost the, the great human quality of how the exchange happened by the first person having the, took the risk to create the art. That's great. You gotta yeah, take that yeah. risk you gotta as take an artist. The risk, yeah. They, yeah. We yeah. all do. Yeah. And if you just see the exchange later, then it, you just, it's mm. like a statue, it's an idol, and mm. it, it, it means nothing. We can definitely help show people the risk taker at their base self whether they're successful now or, or before they're going to be or successful before they're going to be yeah yeah you know because yeah. that that's something i'm i would be intrigued by i mm -hmm. like hearing 
Sylvester Stallone story of like, you know, I had a life, I had a kids, oh my God, what am I gonna do? And so I wrote the, the greatest hero story mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. American cinema's had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just wrote it. I love hearing that. Yeah. I love hearing Harrison Ford, like I was a cabinet maker and uh, worked for the studios, cabinet maker and I, family. Yes, you know? yeah. What, yeah. what inside of you had this potential eruption? What made the volcano start burning? If, at first, every human has a creative skill. And like right. Corporate yeah. America would like yeah. to go back there. Yeah. You're still going to do it just yeah. for survival. Right. But right. really, what makes you take the ultimate risk? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I'm sorry, but if you've had all that success and you have a brand and you want to do another one, mm. a lot, no one's really going to feel bad for you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> some, some devoted fans <laughs> right. will, and they'll buy it, and that's good, yeah. you yeah. know? Yeah. But you're going to have to let the, the ego uh, just stick with the brand. Yes. And you're going to have to come back to your heart yes. to survive the rest of your life. Yes. As so many movie stars and singers are still alive right now that no one even talks about them, and they'll talk about them. 30 years later when they're dead. That's yeah, crazy. Right? Yeah. How do yeah. you live? Yeah. Well, they got to go back to their heart and leave the ego with the brand, you know? I was in a conversation with somebody a few weeks ago and they were mentioning some actor, I can't even remember who it was, and I was curious at the table, They said, it was around Thanksgiving time, they said, oh, uh, he's still alive? <laughs> so it's like, they, they get so out of, out of touch. Yeah. Um, Which with, is great, I mean. Yeah. You should be able to leave that brand and, and relax in yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. It's. I love William Shatner, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I'm like, I hope he. I hope he gets to keep working until the day he literally dies. Because <laughs> if now he goes a year of no more mm -hmm. commercial success, yeah, I don't know what would happen to his mind. I mean, he's been. Actively he's been working at it over, yeah, for about over, over, 60 to 70 years, I think. Yeah. You know, he, so, he was like a child actor as well. Yeah. So, I mean, I would hire him yeah. if he had no jobs. I'd be like, oh, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll make a short film. Right. Not even for right. my success, just for you to keep creating, you know? Because <laughs> you, you don't even have a human ego yeah. left. Yeah. Your ego yeah. is William Shatner. Right. 1,000%. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And I think an artist definitely needs some needs yeah. to have the the time in their life to mm -hmm. sit back and relax mm -hmm. and go, that's what mm -hmm. I created. Mm -hmm. Now let me watch the exchange of people getting it or and people forgetting it too. Let me learn that. That's part of their journey, right? Yeah. And I think w exactly. We had talked about on the phone as well about creating something like that of um, conversations yeah. with creatives where they can freely express themselves without um, concern about any other considerations You're right. outside of that. But I really liked what you said about the idea of it doesn't just need to be people that are names. Yeah. You know, what, like you said, what's that person like before? The like risk taker when you're yeah, starting out. Exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. So that could be something that could be quite um, exciting. God, yeah, it'd be it's beautiful to share because of what is the impact for other people who are not, not they're too afraid and they're not willing to take the risk yet, mm. you know? Mm. Mm. It scares people when you only have super successes. It scares you from your creative skill. Like, I'll, you know, everyone, even great artists feel inadequate. Yes. But especially yep. people who never even take the risk, the inadequacy, and uh, this is why, you know, a lot of them can be, a lot of human beings can just, they, they fall into the trap of suicide mm -hmm. because they're completely inadequate when they measure themselves up to other people and what they were able to take risks and, and achieve. And mm -hmm. if we share more, yeah creative people that they're a human first yes and, yeah, yeah and they chose yeah. to take risks and they didn't stare and compare it came from mm -hmm. within them then i mean you it's, it's it would be really beautiful a, a gift for artists of all different types to give back to 
to people? Because, I mean, again, why did you start creating art in the first place? You, you, it's not just to be appreciated. Yes. It's, yeah. it's to share. Mm -hmm. and so I think that's great. The Publicity-wise, you got to you got to stay the character or the brand publicity wise but wouldn't the greatest gift be to also be like um, not that you need to understand me as a human mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you should understand how I created that in the first place how I fought my demons to get to that right right like, right right that would be a bigger gift than the art you mm. gave Mm. Before they put the suit on, yeah. Or before they put the the dress on and walk down the red carpet. Before and, my success, you know, yeah. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not because people will hold that against you later, right? Oh, you, you're not kind of people like humble beginning stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they like yeah. hearing the hero's journey stories, but um, it's. It's more than that, right? It's it's literally how did you just overcome your your fear of why you're even your purpose for life, and then you decided to create something when a lot of people are like, what is my purpose? Yeah, a lot of people are just stuck on that question. What is my purpose? Yes, yes, and I think as well something like that, um, a conversations or whatever whatever mode we decide to do it in. It's also going to give the young people and, and give people who are aspiring to certain things an awful lot of um, understanding of the yeah. creative process. Because I think one of the things in in schooling and etc. in the States now or in, in media in general is you don't really see process. No. So it's like, how did they get there? Did I mean, it, that's yeah. so... F it's so fucking interesting to see how did they get there from there. Right. Like, what was that process? The individualism, you know, mm. you know it is huge. Yeah. Uh, how, how are you an individual? Because the, the youth and the up-and-coming people, uh, where is the individualism anymore? Yes. Um, yeah. Where is that acceptable to be an individual? Mm-hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's... I would love to ask a bunch of artists that are up and coming, what, what drives your heart? Yes. Like, what is the heart yeah. behind your art? Mm, the like, heart behind your yeah. art. I love what that. What is it? Yeah. Tell yeah. me, yeah. what's burning? What are you using, like a horse with blinders, mm. to to march forward? Yes. Where is your hope? Because art brings hope. Yes. Right. Yes. It, Tremendous hope. It pulls you out of reality, yeah. which could be boring or mundane, mm -hmm. and it gives you this... Or traumatizing for many yeah. as well. I, I know. One of the greatest charity ideas I've ever had and I wish I could do is I want to have... Mm. You know those buses where kids come in for birthday parties and they mm -hmm. play video games? Mm -hmm. I want to be able to have those on the streets and let homeless people mm. come in there and have a video game where they're the CEO or they're a famous pop star singer yeah, in yeah. the game. And every yeah. day for three hours, they don't have to be on drugs or alcohol and be afraid they're gonna get raped if they're a woman right, or beat right, up if they're right, a guy. Right. And they get to just, because the art of a video game, of a virtual reality, for a human being, that's enough. If you have nothing, that's enough to just feel the reward of like, oh, I'm taking a risk in this game and I'm, yeah, I'm succeeding. Yeah. yeah, and then it takes them out of of of, of their poverty, of, yeah, or their yeah. addictions. And I would love to to do that later. You know, um, we will. Yeah, yeah, you know? we will. Because yeah. that's that's sharing art in in such a way. But if if you can get to the an artist and ask them these questions, yes, yeah. Um, that right there, you're right. That'll help people like, okay, I have, I have hope. I see the inner workings because it's not really being propagated to me how an artist wins. It's they just say, go to film school. Right. Go, um, right. go to art school. Right. Um, or be bold and walk up to that director or whatever and get yeah. your shot. Yeah, well, what do yeah. you say to them? Like, yeah. I want to be like you. A lot of directors are going to mm -hmm. be like, you're not. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I filmed on, uh, yeah. you know, I painted pictures and f 
flipped the pages across and took photos of mm -hmm. it. And I, I, had, mm -hmm. I made my own video. You have mm -hmm. no clue what it mm -hmm. is. And mm -hmm. I like Dustin Hoffman. He, I was seeing a, a video of him saying, hey, anyone, you can you have digital like shoot something film something right do it you Just can do, do it. it now yeah i couldn't yeah. do it before yeah you know yeah, yeah. i'd love to interview him mm. about mm. about his artistry mm -hmm. and and what i mean look at the guy who survived insane celebrity in the 60s mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 70s right? 70s as well yeah, yeah and yeah. and he's at this moment trying to inspire young people take a risk because yes. you can now yes yes and and yet so many are not right so if we could get him yep. to t to give us the story behind where he still has this individualism that he's even trying to encourage others you know because we're supposed to say well that's good for them philip but you right. don't have that skill yeah. it's just like let's just go have a beer yeah exactly <laughs> we're not like that right Right. Let's buy their shit, though. Right. <laughs> but we're not like that, and we all we have to like hold each other down. Yeah. Because we're hopeless. Yeah. So. So I think it's a great idea. Yeah, it's you know? a great idea. We both arrived at it, and I think that this conversation we've had here today. We arrived on it right now. We right uh, right now. It it gave us a, uh, for me, it, it gave me a, a journey to, back to uh, a part of myself that is is much much more happy and authentic yeah and so thank you for letting us visit here today because it's really been um very real yeah. for me i don't know how you feel about it it's <sighs> yeah i did <sighs> yeah i d i i feel the the hope in it and the hope you yeah. know uh, i can do um i can get off on like an idea I want to do right now hugely and I just keep thinking about it is I, I've been in the Agora Hills you mm -hmm. know out there the mm -hmm. rolling hills mm -hmm. and one time I saw something far off I thought was a giant on on top of one of the hills wow so I am just dying to find somebody who will let me build a giant on their property mm. I know how to mm. structurally do it mm -hmm. and I want to do that Mm. So, but I can't share that excitement of something I want to take a risk on so bad. Right. You know. Right. With with many because it most people think it's ridiculous when I tell them they're like why. I'm like be, for a kid who's in the car and they see a giant. Yeah. Oh, for cool. an adult who freaks out like what is right. that? Right. Yeah. For that reason. Yeah. Yeah. Alone. Yeah. That's why I want to do it. To take a risk. Yeah. Yeah, I want to take I want to take the risk because I know physically it'll kill me to do it, and <laughs> you know that that does suck. But but again, it goes back to the big ideas. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's kind of comes from within yeah, us. Yeah, it's and, from within. Yeah. And uh, and I don't know. So wouldn't that be awesome to be driving? Be, and, what the hell is like that? A giant and up in the Agora Hills. Yeah, if way off, and it just seems like it's maybe it's laying out on top of the hill, or maybe it's standing or the boulder, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just people can think it's pointless. Well, it's it's about the the the, the, the trifecta. I create it. Right. It's there. What right. did you get out of it? Yes. And I want to yeah. see that. And yeah. I n I'll never see a kid in a car going, Mom and Dad, is that a giant up there? Yeah, yeah. Telling his brother and sister, I saw a giant. You must be crazy. You're kidding. There's no giants. There's a right. You know, so there is a need for the hope that art brings, the ex the wonder that it brings. Yes, you know? I agree. Hope. It's, it's great that you're that you're helping consult and evaluate and, and you know, advise artists. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you've never, you've never dropped your heart for art no person no you have you're to just, find you're a you're just way. helping others yeah yeah and that's really important there's not a lot of people like you doing that no there's not so, yeah so yeah. you say thank you yeah yeah how do you feel about coming here i appreciate you a mm. lot, a lot. And, thank and you if i could come along and help you help others pour it out yes and, and yeah. then help others find hope in that i yeah. would love to yeah. awesome yeah brother Thank Seriously. you. So, Josh, thank you for visiting with us today. Thank and, you. Uh, onward and upward to... Uh, like Buzz Lightyear? Yeah. <laughs> onward and upward. <laughs>
to, yeah, <laughs> to, to infinity and beyond. Uh, well, to building giants, okay. right? Yeah, to building, to building giants, giants yeah. and taking risks. Yeah. So I feel like if we can come together yeah. and create something from our separate journeys, like today, just even a conversation, it's the creative process. Right. We can, like you said, give a lot of hope to people. Do you think as well, um, in closing, that it's kind of momentous that we sort of came back after this journey, right? It's like been, yeah. it's been like maybe four or five years now. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's huge because I, you know, like, you know, you call a buddy, hey, you're still alive? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and for artists, like, yeah. you, you're still alive is a yeah. huge thing, you know? Yeah. It, it is a huge thing. But well, you said something on the phone to me, which was really cool. You said, um, regardless of the time or the place, you're going to find a way to create. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. it right there, right? That's what, yeah. And I mean, that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Even if you're helping other people create that mm -hmm. that is creative mm -hmm. you know because re <laughs> like remember like an art director can be laughed at by a yeah. photographer can be like oh, fuck this art director right and then everyone on set's like yeah fuck the art director <laughs> this, yeah. we're we're the true artist well the art director <laughs> when they get the photos they're like fuck all of them yeah exactly and they're at dinner and they're showing their uh, yeah. their their different <laughs> class showing them and they're going look at the art i made Look what I did. Yeah. yeah. And their contemporaries are going, God, you're amazing. Yeah. They yeah. might go, who's a photographer? But right. they don't really care. Like, you thought of all that? You're amazing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? And then that art director created that under a lot of pressure. Yeah, so the art director is an artist too. Yeah. It's just, yeah. you know, there's so many levels to this shit. <laughs> okay, brother, thanks for your time. All right, brother. Okay. Take care.